in this video we are going to discuss about arithmetic instructions of a086 microprocessor a086 microprocessor supports 20 arithmetic instructions they are add adc sub sbb inc dec mul imul div idiv cmp neg cbw CWD, DA, DIS, AAA, AAS, AAM, AAD. So, totally 20 instructions are there. In this video, we are going to discuss all these 20 instructions. First, let us see the first one. The first one is YAD. So, the, the mnemonic for the YAD is YAD only. Uh, the syntax for the YAD is YAD, destination, comma, source. So, YAD instruction YADs the contents of the source and destination and stores the corresponding result in destination. Here the source can be an immediate number. Source can be an immediate number. That means it may be any number. Some 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, any number. Or it may be some register location. Or uh, it may be some register or it may be some memory location. Whereas destination can be either register or memory location. Destination cannot be an immediate number. Okay. So source can be either immediate number or register or memory location. Whereas destination can be either register or memory location. Let us see some examples. So add ax comma bx. So, here AX acts as source and destination register. So, the contents of BX will be added to AX and the result will be stored in AX register. Okay. Next, let us see one more example. Add AX comma 2000. So, 2000 is nothing but effective address. Let 2000 contains some content 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 will be added to AX and the result will be stored in AX only. Next, let us see one more example. Add AX comma 1, 2, 3, 4. Here 1, 2, 3, 4 is nothing but immediate data. So 1, 2, 3, 4 will be added to the uh, content of the AX and the register will be stored and the result will be stored in AX. Next, add AX comma some within the boxes SI. So SI means a register, source index register. So the contents of SI will be added to the AX. Here one more important point is source and destination cannot be memory locations. Okay. So we can't write an instruction like this. Add 1, 2, 3, 4, comma, 5, 6, 7, 8. We can't write like this. Source and destination cannot be memory locations. Okay. If we want here we can write some register. So AX will be added to the content of the 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 is nothing but some address. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 operand and the result will be stored in 1, 2, 3, 4 only. So, you can write uh, these examples for uh, ADC, SUB and uh, SBB also. Okay, same examples. Okay. So, this is about uh, YAD instruction. Now, let us see the second instruction. What is the second instruction? The second instruction is ADC. ADC. So, ADC stands for addition with carry. So, YAD stands for addition. ADC stands for addition with carry. So, this is the syntax ADC space destination comma source. So, the contents of the source will be added to the destination along with the carry value along with the carry value and the result will be stored in the destination register. So, we can write same examples as the previous one but the mnemonic is different. So, here we have to use ADC. So, AX comma BX same here the source can be either an immediate number or memory location or register whereas destination can be either register or memory location. So the source and destination cannot be memory locations. Okay. So you add AX comma BX then what will ADC AX comma BX then what will happen BX will be added to the AX along with the carry value and the result will be stored in AX. Uh, let the content of AX is like this 13 FF. Let the content of BX is 001. 
what is the result of f plus 1 0 with a carry 1 so this is the carry so here ax is added to the bx along with the carry value what is the result of f plus 1 0 with a carry 1 so this is the carry value so for storing the carry carry flag will be used 1 plus 3 means 4 so 1 means 1 so 1 4 double 0 so this is the result okay so source with destination as well as along with the carry value uh, those will be added okay so this is about uh, adc uh, you can write uh, similar examples as like the previous one so uh, register with memory location register with uh, immediate data uh, next uh, register with uh, another register okay let us see the next one that is sub sub so sub stands for subtraction so the contents of the source will be subtracted from the destination and the result will be stored in the destination so source can be either an immediate number or memory location or register whereas destination can be either memory location or register so you can write n number of examples but here source and destination cannot be memory locations so sub ax comma bx so ax will be subtracted from the bx and the result will be stored in ax now let us see the next one the next instruction is sbb sbb stands for subtract with borrow subtract with borrow so here borrow is nothing but the carry so for borrow means carry so for storing the carry carry flag will be used so the syntax is same only sbb destination comma source so sbb instruction subtracts subtracts source from the destination and the corresponding result will be stored in the destination so here uh, along with the borrow value so sbb instruction subtracts source from the destination along with the borrow value so borrow means carry value for storing the carry carry flag will be used okay so this is about sub and sbb now let us see the next instruction that is inc and dec so inc stands for incrementation inc syntax is inc space destination only one argument is enough here the destination can be either uh, a, a register or a memory location so inc simply increments the contents of the destination by one so it simply increments the destination inc let us take some example inc space ax so inc instruction increments the contents of ax by 1 so let the content of ax is 1 2 3 4 so now 1 2 3 4 plus 1 means 1 2 3 5 okay next one is dec so dec destination so here the destination can be either a memory location or register uh, dec instruction simply decrements the contents of the destination by 1 okay uh, let here uh, dec space ax let ax value is 1 2 3 4 so 1 2 3 4 minus 1 means it will produce as 1 2 3 3 as the result okay so this is about inc and uh, dec uh, now let us see the next one mul so mul stands for multiplication so mul instruction is mainly used for performing multiplication on unsigned numbers unsigned multiplication so unsigned means there is no sign if there is no sign then the default sign is positive so it is mainly useful to perform operations on positive numbers unsigned numbers okay whereas sign number means it may be either positive or negative number so plus means positive sign whereas minus means negative sign okay uh, let us see uh, an example here so mul space here only one argument is enough so mul space bl here this is an implicit instruction automatically the operation will be performed on accumulator we know the capacity of the bl bl register capacity is 8 bits 8 bits okay so mul bl means multiplication operation will be performed on al and bl al and bl al into bl and the result will be stored in ax ax why because here al capacity is 8 bits bl capacity is 8 bits so 8 into 8 means it will give 16 bits as the output 
So the size of the AX is what? 16 bits. Okay. So in AX the result will be stored. So this is an example for 8 bit multiplication. So likewise we can do multiplication on 16 bits also. 16 bits also. So mul BX. So BX means the size is what? 16 bits. So we know about uh, uh, these registers. BX means it is a combination of BH and BL. So BH means higher order bits. BL means lower order bits. Okay. Uh, here what will happen is the multiplication will be performed on AX and BX and the result will be stored in DX and AX. Here DX is called as default register. Default register means for storing the results if we need some other register then automatically DX register will be used. Okay. So in DX and AX the result will be stored. AX, uh, here AX size is 16 bits, DX size is 16 bits. So multiplication may produce 32 bits. So in order to store 32 bits of data we require two 16 bit registers. Okay. So this is about MUL. So MUL for unsigned numbers. And what is the next one? IMUL. IMUL. IMUL is mainly useful in order to perform the multiplication on signed numbers. Signed numbers. So IMUL is useful for signed multiplication. So signed means it may be either positive sign or a negative sign. We know that negative numbers are represented in two's complement notation. Here IMUL, the functionality of the IMUL is similar to the MUL only except the mnemonic. In place of MUL, we have to use the IMUL. So IMUL, destination comma source. So source will be multiplied with the destination and the result will be stored in the destination. Same syntaxes you can write. IMUL, BL. So AX implies AL into BL. You can write the same examples as the MUL. There is no difference. Simply in place of MUL, you need to use the IMUL. So MUL for unsigned multiplication, whereas IMUL for signed multiplication. Now let us see the next two instructions. The next two are MUL, IMUL are over. The next two are DIV and IDIV. DIV and IDIV. So what is the purpose of DIV? DIV is used for performing division operation on unsigned numbers. So DIV is useful for unsigned division. Unsigned division. So here also we can perform division operation on 8 bit numbers as well as 16 bit numbers. Let the instruction is like this. So DIV BL. So here automatically the operation will be performed on the accumulator. Okay. So now what will happen is AL by BL will be performed and the result will be stored in AX. AX. So AL size is 8 bits, BL size is 8 bits, whereas AX size is 16 bits. We know that AX is made up of two, uh, two registers, AH and AL. So in AL quotient will be stored, AL stores quotient, whereas AH stores reminder, AH stores a reminder. Okay. Now let us see about 16 bit multiplication. 16 bit division. So div bx. Div bx. Now what will happen? Ax by bx will be performed and the result will be stored in dx ax. So here dx is the default register. Default register. If you we, if we need some other register for storing the result, then we have to use this dx. Default register. So now ax will contains quotient whereas dx will contains Reminder. Okay. So this is about div instruction. And the next one is IDIV. So IDIV is useful in order to perform division operation on signed numbers. So the functionality, the procedure for the IDIV is similar to div only, except that mnemonic. In place of div, we need to use IDIV. So IDIV destination. IDIV destination. So same examples you can write, I do BL. So same syntax, same examples you can write. So this is about uh, div and I div. So div for unsigned division, whereas I div for signed division. Now let us see the next one. The next one is compare instruction. Compare instruction, CMP. So CMP, the syntax for the CMP is CMP space destination comma source. So CMP stands for comparison. 
it compares the contents of source and destination here comparison means it simply performs subtraction operation it simply performs subtraction operation so cmp instruction subtracts source content from the destination content but the result won't be stored anywhere according to the result the status of the flags will be set or reset suppose if result is zero after subtraction suppose if result is zero so when the result will be zero if source is equal to the destination then zero flag will be set zero flag will be set suppose if result is positive suppose if result is positive so when it will be positive if source is greater than destination then carry flag will be set suppose if the result is negative so when the result will be negative if source is less than destination then carry flag will be reset so this is about comparison and the next one is negation neg so neg stands for negation negation so neg space here one operand is enough neg space destination so neg space ax so here the major advantage of the neg is by using neg we can calculate two's complement here the destination can be either register or memory location so neg means it performs the negation negation means two's complement so two's complement means one's complement plus one so first one's complement will be calculated uh, and then one will be added okay so this is about <coughs> neg neg <coughs> let us see the next one cbw cbw stands for convert byte to word convert b stands for byte w stands for word so here what will happen is it copies it copies signed bit of byte to the to the higher order bits of ah register to the higher order bits of ah register let we have ax register we know that ax register is made up of ah and al so the size of ah and al is 8 bits let this is al this is ah it contains 8 bits so one let the content is like this so 10 so 1011 so 1234567 let this let the content is like this so 8 bits so 10 11 bits so 45678 it copies the sign bit of the byte so this byte it copies the sign bit of byte means this al to the to the higher order to the higher order bits of ah register so here what is the sign bit here here the sign bit of the al register is 1 so that one will be copied to the higher order bits of the ah now all the bits of the ah will become 1 so this one will be copied here this one will be copied to the all bits whereas coming to the al register there is no change simply we have to write as it is 10101011 simply we have to write as it is so this is about cbw convert byte to the word convert byte to the word now let us see the next instruction the next instruction is cwd CWD stands for convert word to double word. Convert word to double word. Here instead of eight uh, bits, we have to take sixteen uh, bit registers. So let here we have AX register. AX register size is sixteen bits. Here you need to take sixteen bits. You need to take sixteen bits. Let the sign bit is one. Uh, let uh, we have another register called DX register. let dx register also contains 16 bits so here what will happen is the signed bit of ax the signed bit of ax will be copied to the higher order bits of the dx register will be copied to the all the bits of the dx register here the signed bit is 1 so this one will be copied to the all 16 bits suppose if the signed bit is 0 then this 0 will be copied 
let the sign bit is 1 so 1 will be copied there is no change in the ax register ax register is as it is so this is about cbw and cwd now let us see the next instruction the next instruction is da da stands for decimal adjust accumulator after the addition da instruction is mainly useful to perform addition operation on uh, bcd numbers on bcd numbers here the result will be stored in al only after performing the addition the result will be stored in al only we know the bcd numbers the bcd numbers are from 0 to 9 0 to 9 now let us see the explanation and example uh, let us see the first example 53 plus 29 53 plus 29 uh, so what is the result of 53 plus 29 so 63 73 plus 9 so we have to produce we have to get uh, 82 as the result so let us see how we can do that so 53 plus 29 so 9 plus 3 means 12 so what is 12 so here a means 10 b means 11 c means 12 okay so 12 means c value 5 plus 2 means 7 after performing the addition operation we have to check whether the result is a valid bcd number or not 7 there is no problem 7 is a valid bcd digit but c is not a valid bcd digit if it is not a valid bcd digit then what we have to do is if lower nibble uh, we know what is a nibble nibble means 4 bits nibble means 4 bits here c means how we can represent c 1100 so this is one nibble 7 means 0 triple 1. This is the C is lower nibble. The 7 is upper nibble. Here C is not a valid BC digit. So if, if lower nibble is greater than 9, that means if lower nibble is not a valid BC digit or if auxiliary carry flag is set, then you add 6 to the lower nibble okay if the result contains only bc digits then there is no problem whereas if the result contains not a valid bc number that means if lower nibble is greater than 9 or auxiliary carry flag is set then we have to add 6 to the lower nibble okay so here what is the result 7 means how to represent 0 triple 1 how to represent c c means 12 1100 so now we have to add 6 to the lower nibble. So 6 means in binary notation 0 double 1 0. So we have to add 6. So 0 1 1 plus 1 0 with a carry 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 1 1. So 1 3 bull 0 is nothing but 8. 0 0 1 0 is nothing but 2. So 82 is the result. So in this way we will get the output. Okay. Now let us stay, see another example. Example 2 73 plus 29. 73 plus 29 73 plus 29 so what is the result 73 plus 29 9 plus 3 is 12 7 plus 3 means 1 or 2 so we have to get 1 or 2 as the output let us see how we can do that so 73 plus 29 so 9 plus 3 means 12 so 12 means c 7 plus 2 means 9 c so after performing the addition we have to check whether uh, these digits are BC digits or not. 9, for 9 there is no problem. 9 is a valid BC digit. But C is not a valid BC digit. So now what we have to do? If lower nibble is greater than 9, that means if it is not a valid BC digit, then add 6 to the lower nibble. Same point. So 9 means how we can write 9? 1, double, zero, 1, 1, double, zero, 1. How we can write C? 1, 1, zero, zero. How, how we can write C? 1100. So let us add. Let us add 6. So 0, 0 plus 1, 1. 1 plus 1, 0 with a carry 1. 1 plus 1, 0 with a carry 1. 1 plus 1, 0 with a carry 1. 1, 0, 1. Here for 0, 0, 1, 0, there is no problem. 0, 0, 1, 0 in decimal notation is 2. 2 is a valid BC number. But coming to 1, 0, 1, 0. 1, 0, 1, 0 means what? 10. 10 it is not a valid bcd number it is not a valid bcd number so here we have to uh, 
note down one more point. If upper nibuli is greater than 9 or carry flag is set, then add 6 to the upper nibul. Add 6 to the upper nibul or add 60 to the or add 60 to the AL register. Okay. Here the upper nibul contains 1010. So 1010 means 10. So that is greater than 9. That is greater than 9. So what we have to do now? Uh, we have to add 6 to the upper nibul. So now we have to add 6 to this nibul. Or, uh, or, or we can add 60. So 60 means for lower nibul we are adding 0 only. So there is no change. So here what is the result? 1010, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 plus we have to add 6. So 0, double 1, 0 and there is no change here even if we add zeros. So 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1 plus 1 means 0 with a carry 1, 1 plus 1 means 0 with a carry 1, 1 plus 1 means 0 with a carry 1. So now the result is, so 1, so this is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0 means 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 means 2, so 1 or 2. So what is the result? 1 or 2 is the result. So in this way we can do DA, okay decimal adjust accumulator after the addition so after the addition we have to adjust the accumulator like this so simply there are two steps are there so what is the first step if lower nibul is greater than 9 that means if lower nibul is not a valid bc digit or if auxiliary carry flag is set then add 6 to the lower nibul and after adding 6 to the lower nibul upper nibul value may changes so, if upper nibul value is greater than 9 or carry flag is set, then we have to add 6 to the upper nibul or add 60 to the AL register. Why? Because if we add 0 to the lower nibul, the result won't change. So, this is about in this way we can do the addition. So, 1 or 2 is 82. Here the result is 82. 82 means decimal uh, number only. 1 or 2. Here the result is 1 or 2. So, 1 or 2 means decimal number only. 73 plus 29 means 1 or 2. Whereas, previous example 53 plus 29 means 1 or 2. 782. Okay. So, this is about DA. So, DIS is similar to DA only. Here, uh, same procedure we have to follow. So, DIS stands for decimal adjust accumulator after subtraction. After subtraction. After subtraction. So, this instruction is mainly useful for BCD subtraction. BCD subtraction. Here also the result will be changed in AL. So, after doing the subtraction, uh, let the first number is 39, second number is 33. So, what is the difference between 39 and 33? 0, 6. 0 is a valid BC digit. 6 is a valid BC digit. There is no problem. If the result contains valid BC numbers, then there is no problem. Whereas, if the result contains not valid BC numbers, then we have to follow two rules. What is the first rule? If lower nibul is greater than 9 or auxiliary carry flag is set, then subtract 6 from the lower nibul. Previously in addition, we have performed the addition, the adding. Whereas you need to subtract 6 from the lower nibul here. Okay. After subtraction, the result of the upper nibul may changes. So, here the second rule is, if upper nibul is greater than 9 or carry flag is set, then subtract 6 from the upper nibul or subtract 60 from AL so that you can get the result. Okay. So, it is the functionality, the procedure is just like DAO only but instead of addition, we have to do the subtraction. Next instruction is triple A. Triple A stands for ASCII adjust after the addition operation. So triple A instruction is executed after performing the addition operation. Triple uh, A converts the result to unpacked. It converts result to unpacked decimal digit or unpacked BCD digit. Here we have two types of digits are there. Packed digits, packed BCD digits, unpacked BCD digits. Packed digit means 
in order to represent the number we need four bits whereas unpacked means in order to represent the number we need eight bits if we take four packed means zero one double zero whereas unpacked means four zeros zero one double zero we can represent the number by using with eight bits okay here let us see the ascii value for zero the ascii value is uh, the hexadecimal ascii value of zero is 30h we know that zero ascii value is 48 but the hexadecimal uh, equivalent ascii value is 30h for one the hexadecimal ascii value is 31h likewise for nine uh, the hexadecimal ascii value is 39h let us see some examples uh, let us do two examples first example is 5 plus 2 what is the result of 5 plus 2 7 second example is 5 plus 7 what is the result of 5 plus 7 12 so let us do that so 5 plus 2 so 5 means uh, what is the equivalent uh, ascii value 35 so 35 h plus for 2 what is the equivalent uh, ascii value 32 so 35 plus 32 so what is the result 6 7 h so this is the result so here the procedure is very very simple after performing the addition we have to check lower nibble if lower nibble is a valid bcd digit they are if auxiliary or if uh, here carry flag is enough uh, or if uh, auxiliary carry flag is set then we have to write the lower nibble as it is and mask the higher nibble okay so what is the first point here if lower nibble is a valid bcd digit here lower nibble is valid bcd digit 7 is a valid bcd digit or if auxiliary carry flag or carry flag is set then there is no change in the lower nibble we have to write the lower nibble as it is but clear upper nibble so that means make 6 as 0 so what is the result of 5 plus 2 7 only so 0 5 plus 2 means 7 so here 0 means 1 unpacked digit so 8 bits are needed whereas for representing 7 also 8 bits are needed 4 zeros 0 3 bit 1 okay so 0 7 we will get 0 7 as the output okay let us see uh, one more problem that is 5 plus 7 is equal to 12 so for 5 the number is 35 for 7 the number is uh, the equivalent hexadecimal number is uh, uh, 7 so 5 plus 7 means what 12 so 12 means c 12 means c 3 plus 3 means 6 here uh, this is not a valid bc number let us see the next point if lower nibble is not a valid bc digit that means if lower nibble is greater than 9 or if carry flag is set then add 6 to the lower nibble and clear upper nibble and increment ah register by 1 here we are storing the result in al only here we are storing the result in al only just like da there also we stored result in uh, al only okay here 6 means what 0110 c means 12 1100 so we have to add 6 to the lower nibble and clear the upper nibble so we have to write upper nibble uh, by clearing that means uh, we need to place zeros okay next 0 0 plus 1 1 1 plus 1 0 with a carry 1 1 plus 1 means 0 0 with a carry 1 but the carry will not be propagated to the next nibble next upper nibble why because here we perform the mask operation instead of, instead of that we have to increment the ah register value previously ah register value is 0 now ah will become 1 ah will become now 1 so we know that uh, here uh, we have ah ax so this is uh, ah this is al now ah contains 1 0 1 so here what is the result we got 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 0 is nothing but what 2 so 0 1 0 2 is nothing but what is the result 12 so we got the result as 12 so this is the approach we need to follow so simply we have two steps are there what are those two steps the first step is this example if lower nibble is a valid bcd digit or if carry flag is set then there is no change in the lower nibble but we have to clear the upper nibble this is the first point second point 
if lower nibble is not a valid bc digit that means if lower nibble value is greater than 9 then add 6 to the lower nibble and mask and clear upper nibble value as well as increment ah by 1 increment ah by 1 so here we have incremented ah by 1 so 1 and this is nothing but al result so 0 1 0 2 means 12 only okay so this is about uh, triple a now let us see about aas aas is also similar to aa only so what is aas ASCII adjust after subtraction ASCII adjust after the subtraction so uh, this instruction is also executed after performing the subtraction operation uh, so after performing the subtraction only uh, we have to do this instruction uh, here also we have to follow those two steps only but instead of addition we have to do the subtraction so what is the first point if lower nibble if lower nibble is a valid bc digit a valid bc digit or carry flag is set then then subtract here we have to subtract then subtract 6 from the lower nibble and clear upper nibble and clear upper nibble okay second point is if lower nibble is not a valid bc number that is if lower nibble is greater than 9 or carry flag is set or you can write axillary carry flag also axillary carry flag is set then i'm sorry previously then there is no need of any subtraction then no change in previously there is no change then no change in lower nibble and clear the upper nibble whereas here it is greater than 9 previously valid valid means there is no change in the lower nibble now if lower nibble is greater than 9 or axillary carry flag is set then then so what we have to do then subtract 6 from the lower nibble comma clear the upper nibble clear the upper nibble and increment ah by and i'm sorry and decrement previously we have performed the incrementation Whereas in subtraction, we have to perform the decrementation and decrement AH by 1. So previously in AA adding, whereas here we have to do the subtraction. Now let us see the next instruction that is AAM. AAM stands for ASCII adjust after the multiplication. After the multiplication. Here also AAM instruction will be executed after the multiplication operation it converts the result to the unpacked bc digits just like the previous two let us take an example uh, let the let here we are performing a multiplication operation on uh, 5 and 7 so what is the result 35 will be the result so aam aam so what this instruction will do is here the algorithm is very very simple what is the result of 5 into 7 the result of 5 into 7 is 35. Uh, so it simply performs division 10 and uh, modulo 10 operations. So the result will be stored in AX register only. AX register only. What is the result of 35 by 10? So division means it always gives uh, that quotient. So 35 by 10 means 3. Whereas 35 modulo 10 means it will give remainder. What is the remainder? 5. So 3, 5. Or we can write it as 0, 3, 0, 5. So this is the result. So simply it follows uh, these two steps in order to perform the multiplication operation. And the last operation is AAD. AAD stands for ASCII adjust. Till now we have performed after subtraction, after addition, after multiplication. Whereas AAD operation is performed before the division operation. Before the division operation only, uh, the operation will be performed. It converts two unpacked bc digits and first it converts the unpacked numbers into the binary numbers binary numbers it converts those two digits into the binary numbers uh, let us uh, see some examples so div some 63 9 so what is uh, instead of 63 let us take uh, uh, 51 
so d519 here also same procedure will be performed so 519 means what is the result uh, so that 51 by 9 51 by 9 so 9 fives are 45 so that 45 will be stored in uh, uh, 9 fives are 45 so that 5 will be stored in the ax uh, ah register that is nothing but quotient and for 51 minus 45 means 6 so 6 will be stored in the remainder part okay so this is about uh, various arithmetic instructions of uh, 8086 microprocessor.